KYW News Radio Original Podcasts. I am a candy seller. Come on. Selling all the candy I can. You meet some unique people on the streets of Philadelphia. There's Philly Jesus, who walks around barefoot, dressed like, well, Jesus. Philly Elmo, who, you guessed it, walks around in an Elmo costume. They're all sort of celebrities in their own right. Especially the candy lady. Buy my candy, buy my candy, buy my candy, give me your money. (laughs) You'll know the candy lady immediately when you see her. She might be walking down 52nd Street in West Philly or standing outside the Walmart on Roosevelt Boulevard in the Northeast. I remember my baby took a picture with you years ago. On Cecil, Cecil B. Moore. I say what? What'd you get? I got some candy from the candy maker. Uh-huh. On South Street. On South Street. She carries a box of candy on her head. A peanut M&M's box with the top removed, filled with classic candies. M&M's, Haribo gummies, Hershey's chocolate, Sour Patch Kids. How much you got? She'll probably be dancing and singing and joking with you, all while keeping the box perfectly balanced. If you buy three, I'll give you one free, because you're so pretty. Hey. Who is this woman? She's always full of joy when you see her. But it turns out, she's got a pretty deep story. One that will make you think about everyone you run into on the street and what they might quietly be going through. Sometimes you can be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. If I want to get out of my situation, I got to get up and get out. That's the only way to get out is to get out. This is the John Cast, a podcast about interesting and unexpected stories from Philadelphia. I'm Sabrina Boyd Circa, and this week, we'll find out what's behind the songs, the smiles, and the sweetness of the famous Philly candy lady. Hello, thank you for calling. Please leave your name and your number at the end of the beat, and I will be sure to give a great day to you. And remember, you can do anything you wish your mind to. You just got to get up and do it, and I'm going to do it for you. Okay? Okay. Okay? This voicemail message was my first introduction to the Philly Candy Lady. She goes by Candiana. She had reached out to me on Instagram. Her handle is at Philly Candy Lady, and her name is set as Cousin Candiana. Cousin spelled with a Z and two N's. After checking out a few of her videos, I knew I had to talk to her. This woman makes friends everywhere she goes, even with Philadelphia's mayor. So guess what, guys? I'm walking down South Street, and guess who I run into? Who? The mayor of the city. What's up, mayor? Uh, Not much. You look good, baby. Well, Don't worry you. about that. I that. Can I ask you a question? You're making me blush. What? Ooh. Can you buy my funky candy, white boy? <laughs> I am a white boy. Buy my funky candy, white boy. Come on, baby. <laughs> to give you a sense of just how loved the candy lady is, there's a petition going around to get a mural of her in South Philly replacing the now-covered mural of Frank Rizzo, the city's controversial former mayor. The petition has over 2,000 signatures. She came by the KYW News Radio studios for our interview, and in the lobby, the first other person to see her at the security desk said, Hey, I know you. You're the candy lady. And you never know what kind of candy she'll have each day. She's got some deep cuts. I'm taking candy off to my kids. With these are mine, they don't know anything about sugar babies. They don't know anything about that. 
my oh, age. Warhead? That's yeah, my age. I've had Warhead since I was like... You have something every decade. I know, seriously. Yeah, it's, it's a throwback. This energy, the desire to make people smile, was instilled in her as a child. I was a candy lady before I even knew candy lady was a thing. Candiana was raised by her godmother, who adopted her at a young age when her birth mother died. So she took care of um, mentally challenged people, and my mom was a mentally challenged. She had Alexander's disease. She couldn't take care of herself. Uh, and she passed, she passed away uh, from the complications of it, which was pneumonia. She'll often refer to her godmother as mom. They were really close. And her godmother was always cooking and welcoming people over to their home. Every holiday, um, Christmas, New Year's, Easter, we always cooking, and at least 100 people, they came to our house. Not, not only once, but at least 100 people would come to our house during Christmas. Everybody loves my mom, so if she could sing her behind off and she could cook her behind off. She was generous with her food, but she also made a business out of it. My godmom taught me, she put the house with me. We was on dinners every weekend. She sold jewelry at different um, bazaars and different different uh, venues and stuff like that. She didn't have a day job working for a company. All these little, what you might think of as side gigs, were her way of making a living. Candiana followed in her godmother's footsteps quickly. As a kid, she set up a store at her house. I started selling chips and hot dogs. I would make uh, onion rings and uh, french fries and pizzas and... I had chicken wings, and I had all kinds of stores of stuff. So you were selling the stuff out of your house? You just went, just got it from a the grocery regular, store? Yeah, and just du- doubled it from there. And then one day, uh, I was in a, a new high school, Hope Charter High School. Whoop, whoop. I came there, this new high school, and I was in the cafeteria one day. I'm like, y'all not going to put no vending machines in here? Mm. That I know. I'm like, not, not ever. That I know. Looks like a business opportunity. Exactly. <laughs> so I would have my book bag on my back, and I would have a big bag of snacks, uh, Pringles and all kinds of candy. I would, I would have the little chews, the little penny candies, count them out and bag them up. And all. So I graduated top of my class from there, I was a historian. And then I took that into college. Selling candy was helping her pay for college. But then, partway through her program... Her godmother passed away. When my, my godmom, my mom passed away. Yes. That was my heart. That was, I loved her so much. And so when she passed away, I just stopped everything. The only thing I didn't stop was going to church mm-hmm. and hustling candy. <laughs> Candiana was devastated. And on top of the heartbreak, she'd lost the person who always took care of her. She was young, and she was left on her own. But she didn't let that stop her. Like she said, she kept selling candy, and she kept pursuing business opportunities. I have a heart for business. Mm -hmm. At the time, um, I was doing prepaid legal. I I did that for about six years. Prepaid legal is now called Legal Shield. It's basically a multi-level marketing company selling legal services. So she had that going. Then she worked as a nanny for a little while. And then she met this man. We'll call him Mike, who had a business idea. Actually, it was an idea for a business to help other local businesses. It was called Business in the Hood. I'm like, oh, I'm excited. Oh, my gosh. What a great name, great company. The idea was that they would do advertising for small businesses, especially digital advertising, making videos and marketing content. He showed me everything. Yeah, everything laid out from A to Z. How we going to make money starting here in Philly and take it and go around the country. He showed me everything. Candiana had a good mind for business and some experience from prepaid legal, so Mike wanted to bring her on board. And I'm like, uh, okay, because I'm, I want to see business hood goes on where succeed, and I adopted. See, when you don't have a plan of your own, when you don't have a vision of your own, you can make somebody else's vision become your vision, and that's what I did. I made, I made his vision. I took it on as my vision. Unfortunately, Candiana told me things took a dark turn from there. He started uh, abusing me and hitting me and 
He showed me how to put makeup on over my black eyes. And when I have a picture where my cheeks are like out to here. You know, at first, at the first time he hit me, I thought it was out of passion. Because he's uh, X amount of years old. He's trying to get his business off the ground. So I'm like, okay, I feel your passion. I feel you. But to understand it, it wasn't that at all. He was trying to control me, and he couldn't control me. So it was very confusing because one moment you're like, I don't want to know a day without you. I want to see in the next minute, oh, bam, you're hitting me. Yeah. Like, that was a very, a very confusing time where you're just like, I love you, but you're like, but, you, but I, I got a black eye. That's love? Ten years. I gave this man ten years of my life. She never explicitly said that this was a romantic relationship. But whatever happened between them, Candiana clearly had strong feelings about Mike. She invested all that time in a future she saw with him and his business in it. This was a tough part for Candiana to talk about. But she thought it was important to share. Because she knows how many other people have experienced abuse or might be going through it right now. If I can help somebody in some way... That's that's the whole point. It is not about me. Mm -hmm. My story is is not about me. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. Biz in the hood never took off. Candiana said that Mike had a good plan, but he didn't follow through with it and take the steps he needed to get a business off the ground. It took a global pandemic to get her out of this situation. They weren't living together, so in lockdown, she was kind of protected from him. And she was able to cut that tie for good. So, so much when I say, this year would be my third year out. I didn't run, I, but I, I walked out and said, God, I, I deserve better than this. When she finally got out, she turned her focus back to her own business, her candy business. In the last three years, Philly Candy Lady has been trying to grow her presence in the city. She's been getting out there with her candy and going to places you would never expect. We'll hear about that in just a minute. Welcome back to the Johncast. I'm Sabrina Boyd Circa. Cousin Candiana, the Philly candy lady, has been through a lot. But despite those dark times, she's had some wild adventures too. My favorite moment was in the strip club. <laughs> that was one of my favorite moments. <laughs> yep, you heard that right. One time, Candiana brought her candy to a strip club. I am. Balancing my candy. And I, was, I told her, like, I was like, I want to dance on the ball. She was like, oh, you know, I come on the You next. <laughs> <laughs> Were you dancing with the candy? Yes, I had this candy box on my head. At this point, I got a whole demonstration in the studio. The box had a slit on the side. It, it broke. Okay. So I'm on the pole, dancing, <laughs> going back. Crazy twerking, balance so the whole time. The whole time, Never amazing. Fell. Where did you learn this balance? Was this like an art that you practiced? Um, no, actually, I didn't practice at all. I was coming from the gym, and I had a bigger box with candy in it, and it was heavy. I was staying at um 19th and Hunting Park at the time, and so I'm coming from Germantown Avenue up Hunting Park, and I said, I'm like, Lord, this box is heavy. And I blinked my eyes. I just closed. It was, it was a blink. And in that blink, that quick, I saw a beautiful African woman balancing a basket. I don't know what was in it. She was balancing a basket on her head. She took this vision as a sign. So I did it. I put it on my head. And I took my first step with my right foot. I'm looking up at the box like, okay. I took another step. <laughs> And then I started walking. All right, and then it just stayed there. Then I started running. Then I'm like, if I can run, I can dance. I started twerking. Hey. <laughs> and then that's how I wound up on the pole. This doesn't come completely out of nowhere. Candiana danced and sang a lot when she was little. I was dancing from the age of four that I remember. So, um, yeah, and then I sung on the choir. She's even performed in some local theater as an adult. And now, she's using that talent to sell candy. Buy my funky candy, white girl. 
Buy my funky candy now. Lay down the money. Buy my funky candy. Buy it now. Come on, Serena. <laughs> buy it now. Hey. So, there's different song, Brian, when I. Like, Does my candy cross your mind? Anytime. having a lot of fun with all this. And most of the people she meets have fun with her too. But is Candy enough to support her? Can she really make a living this way? Maybe, if she achieves her dreams of growing her business. Right now, she's getting by with some help. She's living with friends at the moment. So I don't, I don't have the, the keys to where I'm at. So my next step is I'm trying to get a place to live. I want to get my driver's license while I'm doing it. So I need I need keys. Mm -hmm. I want keys to my car, keys to my house, keys to my business. So far, I have a, um, my my EIN number. Okay. And uh, I need to, I know I need to get my LLC. And like once I get my LLC, I can start getting um, funding grants and loans and stuff like that. Her ultimate goal? I want a truck, just like the truck, the um, Mr. Softy truck. I want to have a truck with candy in it. And just like you know Mr. Softy is coming on a hot summer day by the song he plays, you would know the candy truck is coming because it would play her candy mixes. Don't you remember you told me you buy my candy? Philly Candy Lady and getting to hear her story, I really do think it's going to make me look differently at the people that I meet on the street. Even the people who sell candy in a much more boring way, just holding a box on the subway or something like that, it's really easy to just brush by them. Sometimes you'll see someone doing something a little unusual, like dancing or singing or talking to themselves. There's this one guy who stands on the corner of 22nd and Market. Maybe you've seen him. He's always wearing earbuds and singing or rapping out loud, dancing with the biggest smile on his face. And he says hi to everyone who walks by. I'll admit, I'm often a little guarded when I walk around Philly. Strangers approaching you, it can feel weird. But then you realize, just like Candiana, this man is living his joy and sharing it with other people. And it works. He does make me smile every day. Candiana has met some judgment over the years. She's been called crazy more than once. One job I used to work at this seafood restaurant in, um, not too long ago in Cheltenham. This one lady, at, at, when I, she saw me at the seafood restaurant, she pulled me aside and said, I want to apologize to you because this whole time I thought she was crazy. I'm sorry. Oh, I forgive you. I, I forgive you. I'm quick to forgive. I forgive you. Even my, my, the situation, the 10 years, before I left out, I forgave him. Because who am I? Who, we all want to do something. We all want to do something. It's her faith that really keeps her going on this journey. I want to shout out my church, Emmanuel Christian Center, ECC. The church is for peculiar people. Okay. You, but everybody is welcome. Yeah. She even prays sometimes before she starts selling candy for the day. <laughs> like with us, in the entrance to a Walmart, right before she put the box on her head. 
Yes, Father God, we just want to thank you for the day that you have given unto us, Lord. Uh, protect us, lead, lead us, guide us, Lord. Please open up the people's wallets to help me get money so I can get to my next level, Father God. Everything, everything I do, Lord, is for your glory. I want you to get all the glory and the praise out of everything I do. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 You're doing this because you need to make money, but there's got to be something that makes you choose this as opposed to trying to get another restaurant job or a retail job. What, what else about this, about candy, about going out into the streets and meeting the people feels like... But, this yeah, is what you want to do. It's not the candy. Is the if I can make somebody smile. It's like we were in the lobby, and I told the guy, "What did I tell him?" All right, let's go hit the streets. All right, you dropped something. You know that, right? You dropped the key to my heart. Oh, oh my God. Here we go. <laughs> and this was someone you didn't even know beforehand. No, I didn't know even know beforehand. <laughs> but you immediately looked like you were best friends. Right. <laughs> And so it's like, if I can put a smile on one person's face, I mean, we live in such a dark, dark world. Mm. And if I could be a beacon of light to somebody, you know what I mean? You never know what people are going through. And if I can be a beacon of light in somebody's life, that's that's my goal. Mm -hmm. It's just to make people smile. It's to make people laugh. Are you ready for candy trivia? Yes. <laughs> the John Cast is a production of KYW News Radio Original Podcast. Name three candies with peanuts in it. Peanut M&M's. Okay. Mr. Good Bar. Uh-huh. Snickers. Good job. Wow, that was fast. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I know. You got two points. It's made in Philadelphia by Tom Rickard, Ryan Seltzer, Myron Kaplan, Holly Stevens, Bibiana Correa, and me, Sabrina Boyd Circa. How many different colors are in the peanut M&M bag of M&Ms and name them? My competitor in candy trivia was Sarah Wolfson. Do we have to buzz? (laughs) Buzz in. She's Odyssey's office coordinator, and we had a lot of fun with her joining us this week. Okay. Well, there's, so there's yellow, red, mm-hmm. green. Philly Candy Lady is really someone you have to see. Check out some photos and videos at the link in our show notes, on our Twitter, at the Johncast, or, of course, you can follow Candiana herself on Instagram. She's at Philly underscore candy underscore lady, and she does have a video of her dancing in a strip club with her candy box. Um, I know there are blue M&M's. Brown, I know there's a brown M and M. Yellow, red, green, blue, brown, orange. Yeah. So six. is it six? Yes. Good job. Yes. So three <laughs> points, Sabrina. Oh. Woo, 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 woo. Make sure you follow us on the free Odyssey app or your favorite podcast player to stay up to date on every new episode. And if you like this, leave us a review while you're there. Finish the slogan. Oh, okay. Don't lay your finger on my Snickers? butter finger. Oh. Good job. <laughs> this candy, uh, it melts in your blank and not in your blank. Uh, hand, I mean mouth, not hand. Right. M&M's. Yes. 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 <laughs> Somebody likes M&M's. Yeah, it's my favorite candy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again soon. Sabrina, you won. Congrats. You almost thank you, won. Thank you, thank you. You were so close. It was so close. I felt it. You were so close. Yeah. I felt like we were tag teaming in a little. For some of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Ooh, mama candy. Mm-hmm. Woo. <laughs>